Welcome to the Mass for Inspiration. The Mass for Inspiration is being brought to you in part by Joseph A. Moran Funeral Home, 229 West 12th Street in Hazleton, 570-454-8341 or online at moranfuneralhome.com and the LaSant family. To you, I lift up my soul, O God. To you, I have tested, trusted. Let me not be put to shame, nor let my enemies exalt over me. Let none who hope in you be put to shame. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves this morning to share these mysteries, let's take a moment to put ourselves in God's presence, acknowledge our sins, and ask him in his great mercy to forgive us. Lord Jesus, just God, you are the source of love and compassion. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, just one of God, you are the foretaste of salvation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, just one of God, you will come on the last day on the clouds of heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that, gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and Judah. In those days, in that time, I will raise up for David a just shoot. He shall do what is right and just in the land. In those days, Judah shall be safe and Jerusalem shall dwell secure. This is what they shall call her the Lord our justice, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, to you, O Lord, I lift my soul. To you, O Lord, I I lift my soul. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God my Savior, and for you I wait all the day. To you, you, O Lord, Lord, I I lift my soul. Good and upright is the Lord, thus he shows the sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice and teaches the humble his way. To you, You, O Lord, Lord, I I lift lift my my soul. soul. All the paths of the Lord are kindness and constancy toward those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The friendship of the Lord is with those who fear him and his covenant for their instruction. To To you, you, O Lord, Lord, I lift lift my soul. soul. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all. Just as we have for you, so as to strengthen your hearts, to be blameless in holiness before our God and Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his holy ones, amen. Finally, brothers and sisters, we earnestly ask you to exhort you in the Lord Jesus that as you receive from us how you should conduct yourselves to please God and you are conducting yourselves, you do so even more, for you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, 
there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on earth nations will be in dismay, perplexed by the roaring of the sea and the waves, People will die of fright in anticipation of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. But when these signs begin to happen, stand erect, raise your heads, because your redemption is at hand. Beware that your hearts do not become drowsy, from carousing or drunkenness and the anxieties of daily life. And that day catch you by surprise like a trap. For that day will assault everyone who lives on the face of the earth. Be vigilant at all times and pray that you have the strength to escape the tribulation that are imminent and to stand before the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, dear friends in Christ, today we begin the beautiful season we call Advent. It's that quiet time of waiting and anticipating. Well, perhaps I should say, Today is the day we're supposed to start the beautiful season of Advent, the time of quiet preparation and anticipation. I say that because we're out of that world and it's anything but. The world today certainly doesn't fit the description of what Advent is. For months now, we've been celebrating the holiday season. These last few days have been insane. People getting up in the middle of the night to go to stores, to shop. All kinds of Christmas trees in our stores, in our streets. Christmas lights. Our homes are decorated. We're jolly and merry. We're going to all kinds of parties and celebrations because we're celebrating the holiday season. Whatever happened to Advent? Advent is supposed to be that time of preparation. Advent is a time when we look forward to something. We look forward to a thing called Christmas, the celebration of the birth of Jesus 2,000 years ago. But we've changed it all. We've turned it around. So really, what has happened to Advent. What has happened to what is supposed to be a quiet season of preparation and anticipation with our simple Advent wreath and four candles reminding us of the countdown to that wonderful celebration of Christmas Day? Can you remember back, and I'm sure many of you do, back at a time when you grew up and Advent was really the time of preparation Oh, sure, you went to the department store to see Santa Claus. Yes, there were decorations there. But at home, it was quiet. There were no Christmas trees, no decorations in the streets. But on Christmas morning, you come down to something magic. There was your Christmas tree. There were the lights. There were the presents. There was the beginning of the celebration. And it was during that wonderful day that we rejoiced and celebrated in the birth of Christ. And then the days after Christmas, we went and visited and exchanged gifts and had our parties and our dinners with our friends and loved ones. Today, day after Christmas, walk outside and our streets are lined again with Christmas trees, Christmas trees that are old, worn out, and thrown away. Our first reading this morning, perhaps, teaches us a great lesson. Jeremiah lived at a time hundreds of years before Jesus, and God's people who were formed by him and shaped by him and cared for by him were straying from him. His kingdom on earth, the people, 
were divided already, northern and southern kingdom. The northern kingdom had already fallen into a, pi a pagan power. And now, in the time of Jeremiah, his own land has fallen away from God. And his own people have been devastated. A foreign power has come in and taken away their land, taken away their treasures, taken away their temple, led them off into slavery, into a foreign land. And Isaiah has been trying and trying to warn them, don't drift from God, trust God. But no, they didn't trust God. They kept falling further, further away from God. They wanted to be like the people all around them. They wanted to be a part of the world in which they lived, not part of the kingdom of God. And the result was devastation. For whenever we turn away from God, like Adam and Eve found that out, whenever we turn from God, it's then that we lose everything. We lose the love, protection, kindness, and goodness of God. But Jeremiah promised a gift from God. He assured them that God would not forget them, that God would return them and restore them, that God would heal them. And that, my brothers and sisters, is what we're really and truly learning today in Christmas, the gift of God's Son. But we can learn from history, because it seems that today, history may be repeating itself. We see it all around us. Christmas is being replaced by the holiday season. We don't even in our Christmas cards have pictures of Jesus, just trees and flowers and plants, things of the earth. We've replaced Good Friday with a thing we call Black Friday. We've taken all of our structures and pushed God aside just like the people of old did. There's no room for God in our government, no room for God in our public places. Oh, God is tolerated today by our society as long as he stays in a building like this within these four walls and doesn't try to go outside into the world. Yeah, God can hide himself here, but God has no place in our world today. And a world without God is a world of destruction. And a beautiful gospel this morning we were warned and told, be careful, beware, this world is not forever. This world will come to an end. And we get so excited about global warming and how we're going to preserve our earth. We didn't create the earth. Therefore, we're only stewards. We need to care for the earth, but it belongs in the hands of a loving God. And that's what Advent is really all about bringing back structures into our lives. And so as we begin this beautiful season today, what might we learn? What might we ask ourselves? What is my attitude towards Advent? Is it going to be one of partying and celebration of something that hasn't happened yet? Or am I going to wait and preserve that wonderful day which lies four weeks ahead of us? for the real celebration of the birth of Christ? Am I going to bring Christ into my own life each day, or am I going to go along with the rest of the godless world headed for destruction? I believe, believe in, God, in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator, creator of, of heaven and earth, and, and in Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, his only Son, our Lord, Lord who was conceived born, by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, crucified, died, and was buried. buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. United in faith, with confidence in God, love for us, let us offer to him our petitions this day for the church, that she may be a source of strength and witness 
to the world and to others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Those who work on behalf of the poor, that their work will be blessed by God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from the effects of war, famine, and injustice, that God will help them and strengthen them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the vulnerable in our community and their families, that they may find support from us as Christians and may learn to love and serve the Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, they receive a pleasant and eternal place in the kingdom of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, these are our petitions today. We ask you to hear and answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have received the bread we offer. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have received the wine we offer. <coughs> the fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become for us a spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below, gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago. Open for us the way to eternal salvation, that we may become once again in glory and majesty, and all at last be made manifest. We who watch for that day, may we inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. So with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, hosts heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the, in the highest. highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who, who comes, comes in, the in the name of the Lord. Of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed, added willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, death O Lord, Lord, and, and profess, profess your resurrection, resurrection until, until you, come you come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. May praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, Our Father, who art, who art in, heaven, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, our trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, who trespass against, against us. And, and lead, lead us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from evil. evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. We await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And share with one another now a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you, Monsignor. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the sins, the sins, of, the sins of the world. Have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God, you take, take away, away the sins, sins of the world. Have mercy on us. On us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God you, take you take away the sins, sins of the world. world. Grant, Grant us, us peace. peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not I am worthy that you should, that enter, you under should enter my roof, under my roof, but only, only say the word, the word and my, my soul, soul shall, shall be healed. Be healed.
Lord will bestow bounty upon his people on our earth shall yield its increase. Let's pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk in mid-passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven, the whole fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace and glorify the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. The Mass for Inspiration is being brought to you in part by the LaSant family.